Chicka ticka nam barrel and out. Chicka barrel, chicka barrel, barrel and out. Yo, we gotta get somebody to freestyle on that beat. That beat is too hot. Every time I do a crazy intro, you know what it is, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, Farid. Yes, Danny. We are here live on Entertainment 411. This is right. This is it. This is all things entertainment. Your backstage pass. We're backstage, which is just really the back of my condo, but it's it's the stage for for life. So so yeah. Ha! We are live here, guys. Entertainment 411. All things. We're talking casting directors, producers, actors, the makeup artists, props department, everything. Everything and anything industry. That's right. Entertainment 411. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I have a very special guest. We're doing a one-on-one 10 questions interview style with none other than casting director extraordinaire John Comerford. Yes. And if you haven't heard that name, you're in the wrong industry, y'all. If you're an actor and you haven't heard that name, call your agent and ask him why you have not auditioned yet for John Comerford. He's been in the business for quite some time and he's one of the best. I'll tell you how good. We're talking Emmy Award winning good. Yes, Emmy Award winning John Comerford. He's going to be humble. He's going to not mention anything. So I'm going to mention all of it. Emmy Award winning, ladies and gentlemen. Not only that, he may have cast some shows you heard of. I don't know. Shit's Creek. You ever heard of that one? Star Trek Discovery. Mm, no big deal. No big deal whatsoever. So if you have your questions, you want to ask John Comerford some questions. If you're wondering, how do I get in front of Sir John Comerford? I don't think he's knighted, but I'm going to knight him tonight. Please log into your Instagram, Facebook. We're here live at eBoss Canada. Tell your friends to join us. Ask those questions. I will pin them. I will answer them as they come in. But we have our own 10 questions. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, John Comerford right here. Nope. Hey, thanks, Reed. Oh, what a gracious opening. Thank you very much. No problem. Wow. Thanks for joining us today, John. You're welcome. My pleasure. Can we, can we start off by seeing the Emmy? We see it there on your on your desk in the back. There it is. Oh, yeah. I was a lucky boy. Hey, That's man. what happens when you hook up with Eugene Levy and his son Daniel. <laughs> they, they they tend to get you some trophies, some hardware, eh? They do indeed. I think they picked up a few themselves. Yeah, no big deal. Like I mean, you know, one of the biggest shows to come out of Canada, if not the biggest show this generation to come out of Canada, I'll have to say. Yeah. Shout out to Eugene and Dan. Um, again, thanks for joining us. Have you been? Have you seen any of our stuff before? Are you familiar with the process? With the I'm, a, I'm afraid I haven't. I've only seen your picture suggested, and I haven't cast you, so that's number one on my list. Oh, nice. There you go. Agents, if you're watching, John Cohen for mm -hmm. live. He said it. It's recorded. So call we'll start pushing the, pushing the auditions out. You know what I mean? Call, call um, your no, agent. Get that. Um, so like I said, our show, if, so I'm sure you heard from the intro, we, we have all things entertainment. We do a lot of backstage stuff. We want to get to know you as John Comerford, not just John Comerford casting director. We want to know mm -hmm. where you came from, you know, your journey here. And we kind of want to put a face to the name that everybody knows in this business. And oh, that's um, nice. start. Yeah, we started doing this during the pandemic, and people tend to, you know, really, um, really resonate with the fact that we're all humans at the end of the day, and there's more to us than just our jobs. But that's right. It, it also puts a bit of familiarity with the person that you are and everybody working with and for. So, um, are you ready? Should we start it off? Sure, go ahead. Let's start. All right. Get we're to know me. Five. Sorry. Get to know me. Yes, sir. And that's a good segue. We're going to start off with. Question one, we're going to go to five questions and we'll take a quick break. But the first question is your journey, John. So what was the journey to becoming a casting director? Where did it all begin? Wow. Well, I, first of all, um, I was an actor. Um, and it's hard because there are really there's nowhere in Canada that I know that you can go and study to be a casting director. So I'll tell you a little bit about my journey. I was a, a young kid growing up in Etobicoke. I went to high school there and uh, I played sports, but I had this kind of curiosity about the theater. So I had a little beaten up Volkswagen when I was 16 and I drove downtown every, every time I could every night and would go to the theater. And that was my true love. I loved going to the theater. I would go to the theater every night that I wasn't working 
and I would see all the Canadian actors, and I'm talking, well, let's not say how long ago, but long time ago. Um, and so uh, at that time, there were lots of opportunities. Uh, there was a great opportunity that University of Toronto and the Ontario government started free called the Ontario Youth Theatre. Are you familiar with that? I've heard of it, yes. Yeah. So you audition, you're a young actor, you're 15 or 16 years old, you audition for Ontario Youth Theatre. Um, and I got in, I spent two summers down at Hart House at U of T doing wow. plays. Um, great experience, a lot of fun. Um, you know, we weren't very good, but it was the experience. We had great teachers, great mentors. And uh, from there, I spent until the age of 24 as an actor. And I went across the country. I was at the Shaw Festival in 79. I went to Stratford, ended up going to Edmonton for a while. Um, and it was in between gigs that I thought maybe I'd like to switch careers and become a director. So I, I went and applied at the National Film Board of Canada. Nice. And I thought I was going to be a director. And all the directors who were working there back, back there, Norma Bailey, um, oh, Cyril Gunnarsson, Murray Battle, all these people would come to me and say, John, you're an actor. Uh, could you... Could you, could you kind of find the actors from our next short film? I'd say, sure. So I'd phone up all my friends, and all my friends got jobs at the National Film Board in, uh, in, in all these films. And it just so happened that one night, the lovely Dorothy Gardner, who ran CBC Casting, I don't remember if you remember, in the 80s, CBC Casting Department was run by Dorothy Gardner, a lovely woman who um, encouraged encouraged you know, young young people who are interested in casting to come and join there. And so I was offered a job after she saw the shows at the, at the film board. And so I went to work uh, at, at the age of 24 at the CBC in, in what was rather a large casting department. I think there was 16 casting directors. So yeah, that's, some, how, that's some how I got into it. Some casting directors in this industry today were also at that position, correct? Yeah, I think John Buckham was there, George Rabone yeah. was there, Diane Kerbel was there, I could go on, Tina was there, yeah. I was there, yeah, Gail Carr, I, a, a lot of us learned, a lot of us uh, stopped by there, the great training ground. So, I can't say I yeah. remember, I wasn't born yet, I'm aging myself now, but <laughs> I wish I was in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. But that, that's great, so you ended up marrying both worlds, essentially, if you think about it, you you. You wanted to be. You worked. You started off as an actor. You took in the world of directing, and then you kind of merged it, I guess, because cast director is a little bit of both. You have to understand talent as someone who you know works in the stage and in front of camera before, and, and then also direct them to you know make adjustments on the fly in order to be cast in said parts. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's kind of a dream job because well, there's a difference. I'm not a director. I'm a casting director, and I think. Casting directors have a very specific role in how to direct auditions. Mm -hmm. It's different than being a director. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't direct a, a movie, but I could certainly direct an audition that could get you a part in a movie. How's that? Right. No, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would argue equally so. A director might not be able to run a casting session. I'll leave that one alone. <laughs> well said. Amazing. That's. A, I had no idea. I, I yeah. have. I, I've read your bio, but I didn't realize you came from the world of acting prior to. So that's that's super cool. And I mean, I think that that's always, um, as an actor myself, I think a lot of the actors who are watching can agree. It comes from a. It, it, it's it's reassuring in the sense that knowing that you've been on the other side of the board and the other side of the camera, you can kind of understand what we go through. So yeah, there's a bit of um, uh, you know empathy. empathy, a bit of empathy. Yeah, but not just empathy, yeah. understanding. So amazing. Right. Yeah, so that's how I started, yeah. Sorry? I mean, it's amazing. Like, uh, just, you know, you fall into it. It's it's a hard, it's, a, it's it's an interesting way to, you know, you have to have, I'm blessed with a gift of gift. I think it came from childhood. Observation. Very good. I think that's, you know, I want to talk a lot about, about that tonight, actually. Very, okay, segues, I love it. Little, yeah. uh, planting little seeds. I also noticed that a lot of the casters I spoke to, they all said the same thing. They've all, like you said, there's no school for casting directing. It's not like it's a, there's not like this, the casting director's academy of York. It doesn't exist. It's, it's no. like kind of a hybrid job that 
I need people to fall into from different parts of the industry, whether it was producing or writing or acting or what have you. Um, but I noticed that that common denominator was CBC kind of shout out to them kind yeah. of groomed a lot of the casting directors uh, working today. In, in yeah. Canada. Yeah. They certainly did a lot of us and, and a lot of assistance too. So there you go. That's the Keep journey. It. Go ahead. Go ahead. Trace. No, Sorry. no, we're going to say, keep this about this is your 10 questions. No, I was going to, I was going to say, you know, like it's, we need new casting directors. So that's why I've come on to talk tonight. Say like, you know, you know, if you want to be a casting director, you have to get into casting. You've got to start as an assistant or an intern, you know? Yeah. That, we're seeing a lot of up and comers now. Like uh, there's a few that I know that have started off as assistants and they're starting to branch off and create their own. It's great to see. That's really um, good. Here's a segue to that. Question two. We're going to move on to number two. Kind of, you know, following this journey, what do you love about casting? Like, you kind of spoke about it earlier, but maybe dive deeper into that. What do I love about casting? Hmm. Well, it's a, it's, a, it's a journey in human observation, but and that's kind of esoteric. But, you know, finding, listen, you discover people. You help people. You have this gift to be able to kind of, distinguish what people are, who they are, and try to help them, guide them to do the best work they can. So every time you come into a casting room, it's your job to kind of uh, propel them for them. You never want an actor to leave, you know, disappointed or felt like they've left something on the floor and they've left disappointed. I never want that. So mm. that's what I, and I love the discovery of new and up and coming talent that are passionate. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I mean, you are creating jobs. It's it's kind of well, you're provide you're you're um, assisting in creating jobs in the sense that you get to call these people in, and you're at the end of the day, you get to call the agents and say, hey, so and so is booked the part. Or, I right. mean, that must feel nice every time you do it. I guess the most wonderful before, feeling. Yeah, especially wonderful. If you've worked with them for a long time, and you know, had them in the room a couple times, and this one finally hit. Right, that's exactly it. You know, you find someone new, you. You know, people might come in two or three times, but if you keep working with them every time, they're going to eventually hit. You yes. Know, you just have to have an open mind. You've got to listen. You know, you can't be closed as an actor. And I think that's a misconception from a lot of actors. A lot of times you hear, oh, you know, I've auditioned for so-and-so 14 times and I haven't booked anything. And I'm like, but you're getting called in every time. And that's, that's right. key. So they obviously see something in you, and if they don't, they wouldn't call you in because their jobs are not easy. You can't just call everybody at the same time, right? So No, you can't. You can, you can only call in a limited number of people per audition. But, you know, there's a, great thing, uh, there's a great thing about seeing new people, and that's the agent's job. Yes. Right? We speaking, get into that later. Speaking of new people, we're segueing. We're just on a segue here. This is like one of those... those small cops those little one two wheelers on the on the segways this is based on the last thing you mentioned about you know um finding new talent what advice is question number two by the way yeah. would you give uh, question number three i can't count what advice would you give to aspiring actors okay so you're an aspiring actor you can you 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 you're an aspiring actor so you should go to theater school if you can afford it right if you can't, you should take classes. But there's a technique to, to acting that you have to learn in order to, uh, you know, be able to act. And um, so I think the uh, the most important thing is to to take classes and learn that. But also go to movies, watch television, observe other actors working. I don't think we do that enough. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I really don't think we do. You know. Um, um, but that's the advice I would give. I, I, I would, I would, I would say that, that study, um, the technical part of how you break down your script, how you do your homework on the piece that you're learning, you know, and what angles do you look at it from? Because I think uh, a mistake that actors make, and I know you're going to get into this later is, you know, what kind of mistakes do you make? when you come into an audition and you've only got those one or two scenes to read for his. Mm -hmm. right. That's a good point. I, a lot of, 
It always makes me laugh when I'm, everyone's like, you know, well, so what do you do? Oh, I'm an actor. You know, I want to be an actor. You have someone I can, uh, you know, just, you know, you got someone I can talk yeah. to. But yeah. Call uh, John Comerford to get you a role tomorrow on Star Trek Discovery. No, it doesn't no. work like that. There's a lot of, it's almost an insult. It's like, I go up to him, like, did you ask my doctor wife how she, if she, you could just be a doctor tomorrow? I know it's not the same thing, but everything has a craft. Everything, everything has a life cycle. Right. I mean, look at good actors. Why are good actors good actors? Because they work hard. Why are athletes good athletes? Because they put the work in, right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, Austin Matthews or whoever, whoever, whatever sport you're into doesn't become Both great. Austin Matthews, I like that one. Kind of, you know, kind of poor timing in the playoffs, but love yeah. that Austin Matthews. But, you know, you've got to, you, it's, it's the amount of work you put into it, right? And and that works got that work has got to be hard. You just it doesn't happen overnight. Stars don't become stars. It's true. Is it Kevin Hart that always says everyone want to be famous, but no one wants to put the work in? That's, That's right. Big. Yeah. Um, here's a little bit of a side question here. I'm not sure if this is something you've dealt with. Um, it's more so for the youth actors or you know someone who is a parent and has a youngin that they want to get into the business. What right. advice would you have, or what biggest mistake? Um, would you give to stage moms and dads? Okay. So first of all, you have to find it. You have, you have to be careful moms and dads about things being credible. Uh, there are a lot of scams out there. Um, yeah. I think, I think you've got to, you've got to talk to people. You've got to, you can call your local, um, you can call ACTRA, right? There are accredited classes and, and places to go. Uh, I, I don't think that um, um, you just have to be careful. And I think moms and dads have to realize the fact that the kids have to want to do it. You know, I think that's the most important. If your kid wants to do, he wants to be an actor and he has talent, then support him as much as you can. But be very careful of, of the pitfalls and the, the people who, um, you know, aren't, aren't, uh, related to the industry in a credible way yeah there's a lot of those i remember when i was a kid it was like do you want to be on the new harry potter movie dial this this that's that and come up to these like general auditions yeah and, you know, i was really young i went because i was an aspiring actor like many and you're in this place and they're like you know yeah with this 12 easy payments of 299 <laughs> Using our no-name brand headshot photographer for a thousand dollars, we can get you with so and so. Yeah, no, lie. no, that's not true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Boy. It's unfortunate. You know, especially right now, Canada, it's a lot of preying on. Um, this is my biggest thing. Is you know, actors already have such. They have a problem with ego and confidence, and you know, they just want to please. They want to feel that validation of yes and yes and yes. So a lot of times there are these companies that prey on that prey on that desperation yeah um, that takes the, they're taking advantage they prey on it just like just like these phone scam calls that prey on the elderly this is it's exactly the same yeah. and 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 parents should be aware of that right yes great yeah. advice great advice um this is question number five and then we're going to go to a quick commercial break okay so feel free to dive into this one because this is a this is a biggie yeah. It's all written in capitals here. Question five. You ready, John? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm ready. All right, here we go. <laughs> what, what is, is the, biggest, the mistake? biggest mistake that performers make when auditioning? And this could be a list. Take your time on this one. <laughs> what is the biggest mistake? Okay. Or mistakes. First of all, Let's let's not call let's not call them mistakes. What is the biggest mistake in it? Um, there's a certain thing that you have to be aware of an actor, and you have to understand who you are, and you have to understand your truth, and you have to know yourself. And so you you let's just use the scenario where you get um, you get an audition, right? So how do you prepare for that audition? And there are several things. You wanted to do steps. Say the audition is for the lead in a series. That means it's a new series. So you should try to find if it comes from a, you know, where does it come from the background? Is it based on a book? Is it is it based on uh, comic, uh, comic books? Uh, where is it based? Try to find as much information as you can. Try to find as much material as you can. And then when you come in, 
um, you know, I, I really want to talk about this whole idea of memorizing, uh, you know, memorizing and being off book. I think that's one of the biggest mistake. And, and if you have a second, I'll tell you why. In the early 80s, Toronto became a big hub for U.S. television series. And the producers here wanted to impress the Americans. And so we created casting studios and casting directors would send tapes to L.A. with all the Canadian actors. And we wanted to look the best. So we said, be off book, give the big performance. And really, that worked for a while. But that's not, that's not the right way to prepare for, for an audition right? Mm -hmm. Two things. If you're a lead, it's very different if you're going in to audition for a series that's already taking place. For example, I'm sure you've gone in to audition for Star Trek or a series that's already on air. Mm -hmm. Watch the series. Yeah. Right? Watch it. Yeah. Watch the act. Watch the acting style. Watch the tone. Um, you don't have to mesmerize it. Mem memorizing is not a contest. And you have to remember, if you're going in to be a guest star, you're there for the reason. And you have to think of it, think of that as the actor has to think more of what from an audience's point of view. If you're going in as the guest star, what is your job as an actor? Your job is to, to, to supply conflict for the leading character's plots to go further every week. And you have to look at it like that, not like you're the guest star. Very well put. Does that make sense? Yeah, what yeah. is your, what is your job as an actor? It's to it's to it's to support the leading characters. And I think sometimes if you look at it from an audience point of view, and you look at the scene, and we, and you know there are lots of there are lots of things and tricks you can use to be different in an audition. But I'm just saying the biggest mistake actors make is not understanding their role going into the audition. Am I making sense? Yeah, that that's good. yeah, yeah. I, I like the portion you mentioned about the, the memorization contest. I mean, that's one of the biggest fears of like a lot of Canadian actors, especially. It's like you know, obviously you want to be as off book as possible, but yeah, I like I correct me if I'm wrong. The performance is way more important than if you know if it's a who, what, or where. Right. Well, who, not or where, but like you know, this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's finding the tone of the piece. It's finding yourself. It's finding the truth in the scene. And if you have to look down at the page, that's not, we've gone way too far on this memorizing, uh, mesmerization. Really? Gone way too far on that. Yeah, honest to gosh, we have. I'm a little um, blessed. I have to say, I have one of those, those every actor who reads watching is going to hate me. I have, um, I have this thing where I could read my pages without actually reading the pages, fall asleep, and kind of memorize them in my sleep. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, good. I think you should read to me for you. It's never been a challenge, but I always do. Like, I do have this. Like, I, I, I think people just have to understand too. Like, when you're on set, very rarely. I mean, unless it's like a one shooter, like it's a one. You're never doing that scene in one take. No, there's never. Punch ins, close ups, wide shots. You know, there's going to be a camera move. So at the end of the day, the director just wants to see that you understand the scene more, and the cast member wants to understand the scene more. Yeah. That's right. Understand the scene, understand your place in the scene, understand your place in the show. And um, yeah, you want to be different. You want to be different. Now, when you say different, I'm going to, I'm going to pick your brain. Like, what, what, yeah. so what, are some, what are some examples? Like, I mean, I mean, it's not, it's going to be tough to maybe put this into words, but let's say, for example, we're auditioning for, it's, we're auditioning for Schitt's Creek. And I'm coming in as, since the show's finished, <laughs> we're not going to spoil anything. Let's say I'm coming in as a guest on Schitt's Creek for a guest starring role. Um, and the character is 20 to 30s, um, you know, looking, he, he's a guest who's going to stay at, a guest at the hotel. At the hotel, yeah, at Schitt's Creek. Okay, great. What's an example of, you know, let's say you're going to see 10 versions of me. What are some things you'd like to see, you know, given the context of the show? Those who know, it's a, com it's a comedy. It's a comedy. Uh, okay, so let, let's go back a little bit. You're coming in, you're, you're going to be the guest star who stays at the hotel. What is your job in the show? What, uh, like, I guess in the first year it's hard, but there's, there's, there's a, there's a, there's a specific setup in Schitt's Creek. And that is if you're going in to be a guest star, a, you're not the funny one, Eugene, Catherine and Dan are funny. You're there to provide, to be the straight person, right? There you go. Com common mistake that people would come in great actors, have me laugh in the seat. I mean, just 
really great, but I'd have to remind them that it's not their show. And so how do we do the scene that supports Dan or supports Gene or Catherine? Mm -hmm. I know I'm really getting into the weeds here, but, but, no, it's but good. You, you, got, you have to think about this because um, if you're auditioning for a comedy, you have to have comedic timing, but not be funnier than the guests, than the leads, unless it's an ensemble. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't know how much, on, you know, that's pretty. <laughs> no, it's very specific, but it's a good, it's a good, you know, a lot of actors I'm sure watching can, can relate to that. Yeah. Uh, that's a very key point, especially with comedy. It's, there's a lot of chemistry involved. I mean, there's chemistry involved in all acting, but especially with the comedic timing, finding yeah. the moments, the beats, the places. If you're going to be funny, what, what parts are you funny? What parts are you like the straight man? Like reaction? the straight man. And for you know, what's the what's how do you, what's the funniest thing about uh, comedy? Comedy. Time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I yeah. mean it is. You know, and Time. rehearse, rehearse with friends, rehearse with actors. Great. Yeah. Yeah, let's be all friends. Let's be kind to each other. I like that. You know, I, and, and I hope we can. Ha I hope we can spend a moment later. I haven't. I'm sorry, I didn't really read all the questions, but um, let's spend time a little bit of talking about self tapes and how we can improve that. Okay. We will. I definitely will touch with that because okay, great. here's guidelines we could delve into specifics, just as I did just now. Right. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, this is John Cumberford. Emmy award-winning John Comerford. We're going to take a quick commercial break from our sponsors, uh, and then we're going to come right back with Mr. John Comerford and get back to the 10 questions right after this break. How much time, how much time do I have? Two minutes? who gives you good notes. I'm going to be a bad director who gives you lousy notes. My Tribe Studio. A versatile space for your projects. A space to find your tribe. Actors, do these audition struggles sound familiar? You waste time shooting with amateur family and friends and often think, I wish I could just work with professionals. You've declined an audition or missed a casting deadline and think, I wish they would just give us more time. You waffle on how to play a scene, you deliberate over which take to submit, and you think, I wish I just knew what they want. Your reader bailed on you last minute and you think, oh no, not again. Don't they know this is a huge opportunity for me? You wasted hours on the tech trouble of editing and uploading files and you think, I just want to act and let them handle all the tech stuff. You've reshot an audition due to bad sound, bad lighting, or an amateur reader. You've missed big auditions while on vacation or on set, and you think, oh, this always happens to me. You aren't working as much as you want, you aren't submitting your best auditions, and you wonder, will this acting thing ever work out? Introducing Actors Audition Club. We help professional film and theater actors shoot standout auditions in less time. So you can hit tight deadlines, nail the callback, and book the role. Get access to free training, monthly workshops, weekly classes, book private self-tape audition coaching sessions seven days a week from anywhere in the world. Visit ActorsAuditionClub.com to get started today. And action. Some great messages wow. from our sponsors. Shout out to My Tribe and Actors Audition Club. Yeah, that's a great idea. What a great, what a great thing to do. Segways. You mentioned it. Let's all be friends. Let's all help each other out. There you go. Actors Audition Club. It's a club for it. Come that's out. That's right. Come out. Yeah. Come on out. That's well, right. Thanks for joining us. If you just joined us, if you have missed it, we're going to be recording this and posting it later. But we're here with Emmy Award winning John Comerford, casting ex director extraordinaire from New Life Casting. Emmy Award winning, Schitt's Creek, Star Trek Discovery, just to name a few. When I say a few, it's way more than a few, let me tell you. Now, because you made this request, John, I'm going to switch this up. We're live. I have the power. I'm the host. We're going to switch it up. We're going to pause the five other questions. We're going to touch on your specific question, take right. another commercial break, and finish up with the last five. And that's going to be, what can we do to make our self-tapes better? This is the bonus question, ladies and gentlemen. I'm punching it in right here. We're doing it live at Entertainment 411. John, please share me your wisdom. What's your thoughts on the casting uh, on the casting directing um, situation with tapes 
What can the actors do to better themselves? Right. Do's and don'ts, et cetera. Okay. Given the situation we're in right now, you know, we'd all like to be back in the room, right? But listen, I'm, I'm so glad to see that you have this club where you can help each other. And so um, big mistake, uh, uh, you, you know, w w if you can avoid doing a cell phone audition, try not to. Get good lighting, do a close up. I'd rather have an actor be in here like this, right? Doing a close up this big and doing the scene, lowering your voice to accept the tone. If you have a second person that you want to add into the scene, then you look over here, then you look back here. You don't have to move that much. You can bring emotion to the scene. You don't have to yell. You can bring anger to the scene without yelling. You can do a lot of different things that are small and important and 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 that, that your own life experience choices. Calculated. Uh, yeah, you know, that, that is part of your homework before you come, script work before. But I would say that, you know, try not to be, try not to do auditions that are way back here because really, for it, the, you know, acting all takes place in here on camera. So when you say no phones, is it because of the quality or because you don't like the distance? You know, I, I was, I, maybe I jumped the gun on that a bit. A, uh, you know, a good phone properly set up. Right. Uh, not with like lighting is okay. Good. Yeah, I, I shouldn't is this, say that. Is this, is this lighting good? Because this is a phone. Yeah, I, you know what? So my apologies. No, um, no, no. It's just it's just in the old days, you know, uh, the, the poor actor had a phone and they were back against the right. yes. window and you couldn't see. And, right. you know, we've come a long way during the pandemic. You're since saying then. we got to get like a ring light on Amazon. Bro. Yeah. Not a big you've got, you know, tax write off, mount yep. fixed punch in so this is interesting you like the close-ups that's great because yeah you know a lot of cash just want different shots you know a lot of times it's you know three quarter um most times personally all my auditions usually i'll do like this and i'll punch in a little bit closer obviously yeah um and you're saying you prefer i'm gonna have to fix my light but you prefer yeah. like uh yeah listen here's the big big thing and this is just for me okay auditioning for john comerford i'd have a, i'd have a i'd have a shot that's like this right Mm -hmm. and, and make sure that your eye line, Fred, your eye line is correct, right? And yep. then I punch in and do the same. T I would do a close-up. I can't get the camera here. But I would get a close-up that's, that's, that's like this. And one that's like that. And uh -huh. set, send two and argue your agent. Remember, your, your agent works for you. Correct. Y you employ the agent. Um, um. So two takes, you like a punch in. I, I have I have no problem with two takes. Love that. Okay. You know, exactly. one 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 take could be a little bit, you know, and then a close up. You know, here's a. Can I tell you a great um, a great uh, uh, trick? If you watch television, I'll be really quick. You you watch your favorite favorite show on TV or streaming or a movie, and um, watch it for ten minutes. Enjoy it. Get into the rhythm. Laugh. Do you want? Rewind it to the beginning. Turn the sound off and rewatch it for ten minutes. Mm -hmm. And wa watch how still the actors are in close-ups. Yes. And how how minimal movement they are in scenes. Because when you add the sound and the sound effects and the music, um, you know we enjoy the drama. But you take all that away, and the actor's job is very small and minimal. And I think that's a, an important thing for an actor to learn. Forgive my eyeline, folks. It's just I'm also, this is why it goes down. I'm, I'm watching John, watching me, watching John. That's why I'm punching back up and down, guys. But I'm, I'm definitely watching you closely. I had this problem when I was in acting school. I was, I'm a very, um, I'm a very eyebrowed guy. For yeah. Well, so um, comedy was obviously my forte, but I always, my, my teacher would always be like, stop moving your eyebrows. It'd be an intense scene. I'm just like, Listen, John, I don't know, you, <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to this time we're having here. <laughs> and then it's like, would you knock it off? Like, You're right. It's You're right. very distracting. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pitch a show to CBC called Two Brows, One Nose, and let's see if we get that picked up. Um, any other tidbits for, for uh, I, I know you mentioned you said you'd like to see people back in the room. I do like. I was talking to other casting directors in a couple uh, sessions back, and my personal idea 
would be the hybrid theory. It's like, you know, you guys do have a benefit as casting to see more people because of these tapes. You're able to bring more people yes, in the sure. Rolodex as opposed to having to rent a room out, having a session. So my thoughts were like, you know, initial tapes for, you know, guest stars or even principal right. roles. And then if there's callbacks, maybe those become in the room. That's exactly what I'm doing on the new show I'm doing. There you go. Look, I know. I'm a genius. I'm just kidding. I'm not. You are a genius. No, exactly what I'm doing. I, and, and when they offered me a job, I said, we'll start by getting self-tapes. We'll start by getting demos. We'll talk about demos later if you want, because uh, that's a bit of a problem for actors. But, um, yeah, start with self-tapes. Some people, uh, some people, when you're doing a series that happens every four days or every seven days, Zoom auditions are good. But I think when you're starting a new series, self-tapes, and then callbacks in the room with chemistry reads, the only way to tell. That's a great, that's a great point. I brought yes. this, I bring this story up every time. I just, um, I just finished three seasons of a beautiful show on CBC called Moonshine. Which yeah, did, way to go. It was Good show. Thank you, thank you. It was a dream come true. Um, but the weirdest thing was I booked this dream role finally during the pandemic. It was the oddest thing. And the entire thing was done over self-tape and Zoom. Even yeah. though, and I I love interest all over Zoom. Chemistry read. Right. And it was so strange. But, you know, this is the thing. This is the, this is the one pros about it. Uh, I was talking to my director. I said, hey, hey, man, like, how did you cast with the chemistry just based on these Zoom auditions? And he looked at me and he said, Freed, I was looking at the monitor. I had your coverage here. I had your coverage there. It was great. So that was an interesting point. It was, it's a good way that the to see... You know, it's a different way to see it. So you've kind of seen them on camera already in that sense. But, you know, I do think there's also a benefit of being in the room and what happens. Right. Like energy. You can feel the energy. Yeah. You, you can the feel screen. the energy. But I mean, all, but I think it's important what your director said is that the energy in the room can be good and you can tell in the room. But you can, but people, you know, let's face it, you look different in real life than you do in a, in a close up on camera. Right. Pe people change. Right. They do, you know. Any other tips for the self-tape world? Um, no, keep your eye lines really close. Uh, know the tone of the show. I don't think there's any need for any yelling in any scenes. Love it. Um, but I don't, uh, you don't need to yell when you're angry. You can be really quiet and pissed off and scare the shit out of somebody without yelling at them. Yeah. And that's, that's just a choice, you know? Like, whatever you do, whatever you do with your rehearsing student and your partner, Try the opposite. That's I love that. As an actor, my biggest ick, I guess you could say, is a lot of times, you know, at the end of the day, it's not anyone's fault. Actors, we just love to show our chops. And then sometimes it could be to our fault. Or like, I personally think watching somebody fighting back tears is more impressive than somebody bawling and fake crying or crying. Because in reality, humans want to, mask that emotion right like they don't want right. to show it so same thing with the yelling it's like you know sometimes you know you're watching like glenn gary glenn ross or like a quentin tarantino movie the yelling could be also powerful but then there's some oh, sure yeah there's sometimes when it's just like right there and quiet it's like ooh, ooh right? yeah but i also i i like that idea on, on on suppressing the anger because when you suppress the anger you want the audience to cry right Right. Don't lean into the television screen and be like, what's happening? What's yeah. Going? Oh, my God. What's yeah. she going through? Yeah. 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 It's an interesting thing. I think that uh, I think we forget that we we do these things for ourselves, but we do them for an audience. And sometimes it's best to start with, you know, taking a look at like like from the point of view of the audience, you know, kind of hard. I kind of lost my concentration here, but. It's, 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 it's important to, it's an important thing to do, to learn. Yeah. Um, sure. Other things is that you can show, you know, when you're, you can, you can, um, if I'm an emotional scene and I don't want you to see how I feel, I don't, I can look up and I can not look up. Right. It so, brings back to the point of being close to the camera. The eyes do everything. They can tell the yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't really. I mean, I mean that's a bit too close. But I mean, a close up and and a and a shot like this. I mean, if you're going to audition for me, send two. Uh, you can definitely send two. Um, two takes. Two takes of the same scene. I'm happy to watch them both. 
Ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching, take notes. John Comerford, this is what he likes to see for his casting. Two takes. Write it down. If you didn't, watch this back and put it on I also, I also have to say that I know for a fact that casting directors do watch all the auditions. There you go. Guys, see? You see? see? They have, have to do their job. Yeah. Thank you, John, for that bonus question. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new commercial for you. <laughs> and it's my commercial. All right. Uh, Small little, you know, throw in here, guys. I have a new project that I'm working on. It's coming out very shortly. It is an official selection of TO Web Fest and Series Fest in Denver. We just came back. It is called Day Players. It is about six actors trying to make it in this industry while taking the world's worst acting class. I think a lot of you guys are going to be able to relate. Um, I had way nicer hair. Check it out. And we'll be right back with the last five questions. This is John Comerford. We'll be right back in about a minute and a half. What is this, 2009? You're overplayed! Shit, that would have been a good choice for us. I said I was normal, man. You would agree. I've got a lot of auditions lined up. Like, so many auditions. I'm having so many bookings. Like, it's like a library. Just books everywhere. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so screwed. I can't believe I'm just a big lunatic. As they say in the business, on to bigger and better things. That's right, you're looking at the host of Canada's Next Great Handyman. That's Canada's Next Great Handyman. God damn fuck did you just call yourself? I nailed my audition, bro. They said they'd call me. You are Man. looking at the host of right CNGH. over here. Here's the hand. I'll give you a hand. Give you I will give you a hand. So you want to hear more about how well I'm doing? No, definitely not. I am the greatest. I am an acting god. You wouldn't know your pretend asses from a pretend hole on the ground. I only take serious students' classes every evening. No exceptions. I mind slap you. You mind slap him. Student film around his orgasm centered cat break and enter. The whole thing is a joke. And he fucking dolly shots, okay? You, you've been screwing around for weeks when we were supposed to be preparing. Fuck you, Coleman! I'm a fucking legend, you hear me? I'm a fucking legend! I'm a fucking legend! Woo! Let's go! You are full of bullshit, my friend! I ain't gonna be a shut up, man! Sorry, the script didn't make any fucking sense. Okay, maybe the hot chocolate. Has a teeny tiny little bit, a lot of drugs in it. I'm sorry, guys. Hell, we'll be done. The show must go on. <laughs> Who said that? Is that you? Did you say that? I, I, I did. <laughs>on my Instagram, and you'll see it the next time. But that was one of the teasers. Thank you. I apologize for swearing. That's okay. I apologize, too. There you go. You can yell all you want and be great. It's good <laughs> in comedy. That was very funny. That's very funny. A lot, of talent, a lot of very talented people in that. Yes, I was blessed. A lot of amazing actors. Uh, yeah, you were great. That was really funny. Thank you, John. Very funny. Wow. Thank, you. Thank you. Guys, we're back with John Comerford. Emmy Award winning. I'm sorry. I'm gonna punch that every yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hope you don't mind. I like to. I like to boost my uh, boost my guest. Emmy Award winning casting director extraordinaire. Um, my agent just messaged me and said, "Love John. Um, tell him hello. Tell him. Ask him about backdrops. He must. He wants to know. Do you care about backdrops? Like, do you care if it's a blue backdrop, sheet, <laughs> brick wall? Like, how 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 crazy are you about backdrops? I had an argument with my agent about this. <laughs> Are you? Okay. Um, I like your backdrop for the show because it's about the industry. I think the backdrop should be something neutral. It doesn't have to be green. It doesn't have to be blue, but it should be something neutral. It should be something that, you know, I mean, uh, yeah, neutral. And, and be careful the wardrobe doesn't, um, you know, don't wear a yellow, don't shoot against a yellow wall, wear a yellow jacket. Right, right, right. <laughs> but it's, I have um, a plain brick wall and my agent's like, get a blue backdrop. I was like, okay. I liked it. It was a good move, but you know, anything. Yeah, which we we use the blue one. You know, I've been at yeah, I've been at an agency recently helping with some auditions. They have a blue backdrop. Yeah, it's clean. I do like it. Shout yeah. out to you, Jason, at uh, the characters in Vancouver. We will be Jason. using your blue backdrop. Yes, Jason Marshall. He's my Vancouver rep. Hey, Jason. That's good. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen. We what are other the, questions? Yeah, we're at the tail end. We're at the last five questions. So. Question number six. This is one you wanted to touch on earlier. 
and I think we have the answer. I mean, you can de 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 deep dive into more details about it, but how important is it for an actor to have a demo reel? Okay, really, this is such a double-edged sword. If the producers would, in your contract, agree to give you scenes from the show you did, then you could make a demo tape. Okay. So there you go. It's easy. It's great to have a demo tape. It's great to see that you've been in different shows, comedies, dramas, you know, and, and I love to look at a demo tape. In fact, I can tell you honestly, if you have a demo tape, when you audition for me for something that's a large role, I put your audition and your demo tape together. Very nice. Yeah. And tips on length it, of the demo tape? Two and a half to three minutes. Depending on how much how much you have, it can be quick. It should be done by a professional. I would spend the money to do it right, or or you know, if you have, you know, like your group, hire an editor to do them to do them. Have some, uh, you know, make them good, make them fun, make them serious. But it's important. But I I really think that you should start asking your agents that uh, it's important that when you finish, you're allowed to get your scenes. Otherwise, you can't make a demo tape. Right. Now, for those who are tech savvy and have gotten their footage sometimes without oh, maybe you see, maybe I'm old. That's the problem. You can get it. It's just it's work. But the question is, I think it's another it's a matter of legality. Like, are you allowed to post it on your IMDb and all that stuff? Because it is footage. Right. So I guess the question would be, is it OK if it's, you know, here's a good example. Suits is a show I did recently, but because it's so popular, it's still airing a lot of times if I were to post that. NBC would be like, you can't post that. Take but I down. think for internal purposes, it's useful. Because, I mean, if I'm sending it to you, it's just for yes. your eyes. That's right. It doesn't matter. You're not posting it online. You just wanted me to see it. Um, and, and always, uh, most producers will say that you can have the scenes after your show airs. Right. Correct. Right? Yeah. So, But I think it's important. I think it's, really, I think it's a great tool that adds to your chance of getting a rule. How's that? Very good. I'm going to ask another specific one. This is one of my questions. So we use casting workbook and we use actors access. Um, one of my agents mentioned a good tool that pushes like your name kind of. It's an actor's trick. I shouldn't be giving this out, but whatever. I'm going to give it to you guys. It's free. Here's a free one. Actors access allows you to add like clips from certain shows. You have to yeah. pay for it. It's quite expensive. Do you like that where it's like, you know, here is clip from Suits. Here's a clip from Schitt's Creek. Here's a clip from Star Trek. Would you prefer that so that you can actually pick and choose some of the stuff that someone's been in? You might be like, oh, this is interesting. I want to see what this one was. So are you, uh, I didn't know, like on Casting Workbook, when I'm looking at, when I'm going Not through workbook. Work... On Actors Access, you can do this. Oh, Actors Access. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. uh, yeah, I'm not from, boy, oh boy, Actors Access. I don't know. But I'll tell you something. When you're looking, when you're putting your suggestions together. You know how you can click the reel that'll play the scenes? Mm -hmm. It's important. There you go. It, it may show me something that I don't that I didn't realize you could do. Ah, uh, there you go. Free advice from John. Question seven, here's a good one. This is a really good one, I like this. If an actor has never auditioned for you, what can they do to have the, <laughs> I like this underline, the honor of that first audition with you, demo reel, self tape, specific training, specific experience, etc. I I I I don't know what to say. Um, if you've never auditioned for me, have your agent call me and say, you know, my my name's uh, you know David. Uh, David's a new actor in Toronto. He's just graduated from theater school, or he's moved here from from Vancouver or Calgary. You've never seen him. And would you like to see him? And I think I think all of us would take that uh, honor to have you come in and audition for the first time. There you go. Honestly, call your agents, get on your agents. Try not to call yeah. us. Not that we don't want to talk to you, and we don't love you, and we don't. We're not excited to see you and meet you. But the demands on casting a show are way too high. Yeah, it's, it's you know it's too much. It's too much. Agreed. This is a good question. Number eight. In your opinion, how important is it for an actor to be on the roster of a bigger named agency, pop agency, you know, one with a brand recognition? I think it's important if you're a young actor to be on a bigger, uh, a, a, in a bigger agency, as long as you've got a good agent and they'll work for you. 
I, I, I can also see the benefit. It, it, it comes down to two things, Fred. It. it comes down to one, if you're with a big agency, if you're with a big agency and you're an established actor, you can work four times a year and make a lot of money. Or you can be with a smaller agency and work 30 times a year and make the same amount of money. Mm. And I, I'd rather work all the time, right? Instead yeah. of getting those big, big roles. I mean, you know, I'd rather work, work because the big roles are going to come. If you work, the big roles are going to come. Right. If, if you if you go on a series and you you jump and you people are talking about you, I only get calls. You know, uh, I mean, people talk when you go on a series or a film and you do a great job. People people talk. There you go. Yeah. Thank I was going to say I get calls. I never get calls when my actors are are good. Very rarely, but I but I get actors when you're misbehaving. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> Question number nine, ladies and gentlemen, what would you like to see from the Canadian ent uh, entertainment industry to do differently in order to grow? What can we do to water our grass, John? Bring up the, you know, the industry in the sense of having us have some have a celebrity status here, have a name. Yeah, status. develop some stars. Yeah, it's the biggest frustration. I'm going to just jump in here. Like one of my biggest frustrations with Canada is we have so much talent. The ongoing joke with Canadian actresses, if you want to be a big name in Canada, you go to the States so they can hire you in Canada. Yeah. Uh, which is, you know, it's, it's just at the end of the day, you know, economy, size of population, what have you, infrastructure. But is there anything that we can do as, a, as I don't know, as, as industry folk that we can I, step up? I think what you're doing right now. Oh, stop it. Come on. I think so. Boy, yeah. how many how many times have you gone to Los Angeles? Get down there. You might, you know, you're, you're going to, you've got a job at NCIS and all of a sudden, uh, Canadians call you up and they say, we need you, you're in LA, we need you back here in Canada. Right, right. right. This happens all the time. Um, I think we should develop our own stars. We should have more shows like yours. Um, we should take the initiative. Actors should should uh, hang out with directors and writers. And and um, like the thing you're doing, your, your studio of actors, you know, you should invite writers. Never, everyone should be writing and directing. Make films on TikTok. Do, it, do whatever you can do to get yourself out there. But we need to develop some stars and keep them here. Yeah. Just, just, we don't we don't have the budget, of, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, that's part of it. Like, you know, at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's, it's tough. We're competing with the big dogs. They got the money. They got more than three channels. We got three channels. Yeah. So it's it's there's only so much that we can develop here, but, but yeah. what are the best? Some of the best small independent films at Sundance, right? Yeah. And some of the great movies you, you you know, if you've got a good script with your friends and you make a good movie, uh, someone's going to see it. I mean, but look at it, like you know, look at how well this industry. Even though we have smaller infrastructure, some of the biggest shows came from here. Like, look at the look at the Shit's Creeks, the Kim's Conveniences, the Orphan yeah. Black, the right. You know the Shorezies, the, the yeah, the, yeah, short letter, yeah, yeah, and the talents. I mean, look at anyone, you know, anyone that's that's out there right now is is doing really well, and there's a lot of them that are Canadians. So, you know, we are doing well. We do have the talent here. I agree with you. I think we need to showcase our chops just a little more, and whether it be creating our own work or, or finding better ways to like TikTok, make it. Yeah, you know, any, like, anything. You know, what do you mean, aging yourself? Look at you, TikTok movies. Yeah. What about TikTok movies? Are you on right? TikTok gun? No, <laughs> I, I'm not on social media. Oh uh, gosh, I'm with you. But I, I mean, you know, I wish we would. I wish. I wish we would. Can, I wish we would really think actors are th ourselves as artists. So you know, we are. That's what it is. We create. We create art. We create characters. Here we are, John. We're at the last question. I want to thank you. You've been amazing and insightful. Um, this is just blows my mind i am learning a lot myself as an actor like listen even the little tidbits you're giving about your your uh you know your preferences for auditions like every cast and director is different so these are yeah. great notes to have as an actor to put in our tool belt so again i thank you you're um, welcome. last question and then we have a couple from the audience yeah we number 10 here's number 10 this is the big one for you we all have mentors the people who give us hope inspiration and drive to keep going who are your mentors and why Oh, who are I don't think you'd know any of my mentors. That's okay. You could just this is a shout out for that. It's an ode to them. An ode any to them. Oh, I think I think I'd like to uh, shout out to some of the great directors I worked with. Um, you know, Sterla Gunnarsson, who was head of the Directors Guild of Canada. 
Um, I think some of our great producers like John Calvert, who produced Flashpoints, being a great mentor to me. Miles Dale, who I Miles Dale, who I worked with for the first 10 years of my cre career before he won an Oscar, um, was a great mentor to me. Um, you know, and a guy named Bill W, but I don't think you'd know him. Did I freeze? Did you freeze? I froze and I'm back. <laughs> Sorry, there you go. <laughs> I love <laughs> dramatic pause. Timing. timing. <laughs> yeah. Comedy, comedic timing. Uh, so this is why I have a backup stream. Guys, sorry, I'm, I, I'm, I'm out all day. And then by the time I get here for this live stream, my phone is at 20% and I'm like struggling to plug it in, guys. I need to get a backup phone. Um, thank you for that, John. I did hear yeah, you. I was you. able to listen to you. I was able to listen to your mentors. I wasn't I wasn't just looking down at my That's okay. computer rudely. We have one question from John, Don, Jonathan. Apo Jonathan, you've been here before and I can't say your last name. So I need you to DM me and tell me how to pronounce it. Apotive. Jonathan Apotive. Here we go. Oh, look at that. It's like up there on the screen. Touching on what you just said, as a new actor, I know casting directors don't like to getting getting introduction emails from actors since that would be overflow in the inbox. But what would be okay to have my agent send as an email on my behalf? Or would you prefer a call from the agent as you mentioned before? So essentially, email, phone call, what do you like? I guess maybe it depends on the casting director. Yeah, it depends on the casting I mean, director. Sorry, on the, I, sorry, depends on the agent as well. Yeah, but I mean, it depends on the casting director. But remember, the agent... You know, they're trying to get you work. They're working for you. I uh, Thanks for the question. I would ask your agent to call me, uh, send me an email, follow up with a phone call, send me your picture, any material you have, like a demo tape, anything that I can look at to get familiar with you, and I'd be happy to bring in. But I need to see something. Amazing. Yeah, call your – especially if there's something you see that's casting that you think you might fit the bill on or there's a role right. that maybe your friend maybe say, hey – Now's a good time, you know, pick the time to shoot your shot, right? Would that be, you know, yeah. and to say, hey, maybe I should reach out to my agent to see if I can get in front of John. Yeah, you have to. I mean, I don't know any other way, unfortunately, you know, like the agents are the conduit to to us. And, you know, I, I'd never not take a call from an agent. If you don't have a conduit, you can't do it. You can't do it, man. That's right. Right. I don't know why I did that. was a dad joke. It's great. Yeah. I don't have kids. I only have two dogs. Um, Lisa Cleo with a clutch question in the in the clutch right here. What's the clutch? Yep, 828. If you haven't seen a casting director in a while, should you ask your agent to reach out to them? Of course. Yes, of course. Lisa, have your agent reach out. There you go. I'm going to get yeah. my agent to reach out right away. Look, you, we even started the stream. John's like, I haven't cast you anything yet. No, the agents are on it. They're on it. They're working the phones. Um, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, now is the time to – Throw them in last minute, but if not, this was the live 10 questions with Mr. John Comerford, Emmy Award-winning John Comerford, who has casted many, many a projects, past and present and future. So keep your eyes peeled for your inbox. Um, John is always working hard, especially with this Canadian business that we have. He has been responsible for many of the shows that you know and love. And I do thank you, John. It was a great to great to e meet you. Um, thank you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I, I'd like you to all go back and and search your files for a film called Ordinary People. First feature film I ever cast starred a young kid who was 15 years old named Ryan Reynolds. He's nobody. Who's that? Who? <laughs> he's, dead. he's dead pooled. Yeah, he's dead pooled. I was going to say anyone named Ryan right now is Canadian is killing it right now in the industry. <laughs> um, we have one more point here we want to just get from the Entertainment 411 people. Is there anything that you want to touch on, John, before we let you go? Enjoy your dinner. No, no. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope, uh, I hope, you know, be kind. Um, when you come in, you know, come come in. Um, ready. Ready, yeah. yeah. When, when, when you're finished your audition and we think we've done a good take, say thanks and leave. There you go, yeah. Usually usually that's the right feeling. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, 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 you don't want to. Unless you're, unless you're asked and, you know, wanted well, to ask a lot of questions, but, but uh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Entertainment 411. I'm your host, Fareed Yaz. Danny, this was casting director extraordinaire John Comerford. Thank you so much for tuning in. This is going to be reposted. If you missed it, share it with your friends. 
Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, MySpace, AOL Messenger, whatever yep. what's out there. Free, like you are fantastic. Thank, oh, thank you very you. much. No, I be, appreciate it. Be that. kind and spread love, everybody. That's what we need to do these days. Thank you, John. Good night, everybody. Right. This is Entertainment 401. Have a good night. Bye.